Well, 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 welcome back, you guys, to yet another interesting video topic. So I got this email two days ago on January 10th. I'm going to read you guys this relatively lengthy email that I received from a 59-year-old white divorced man. Now, I must admit, when I was reading the email, I'm like... This is a bit too much information. And I started to feel disgusted, right? I'm like, spare me the details. I don't need to know all of that, right? But then I thought about it. I was like, hmm, this is a bit different than the emails that I've been receiving before. Especially relating to men coming forward to share their experiences relating to cuckold. And that whole arena, right? So, this guy isn't necessarily a cuckold. Um, he identifies himself as a bisexual white man. Which makes me wonder. I'm like, hmm, right? Things can get kind of like a little, a little, uh, a little kind of confusing, right? A little twisted, shall we say. When it comes to transsexual relationships, right? Or transgender relationships. So, I'm going to read you guys this email. And I want you to let me know what you think about this. I got to take me a sip yeah, of my um, South African red wine toast to you guys. All right. Pull this thing closer. So, he says, Hello, Danny. I'm a divorced 59-year-old white man. And I would like to add my perspective. I am in California, but before moving here. And I think some of these details, I think he just kind of made up, right? But it could be true. Um, he says, I'm in California, but before moving here, I lived in New York until 2017 and then came West. I was married from 26 years old to 46 years old, essentially 20 years, right? Um, and divorce. I never did any cuckolding. However, being divorced, I decided to explore after you divorce. And I think I just like to which we'll get to. He kind of talks about how the divorce impacted him, right? Or like some things that happened as part of the divorce, which kind of guided him to into this new arena, right? Of wanting to see what the other side was like being married to a woman, right? He's he's a white man being having been married to a woman for 20 years. And that's a lot that's a lot of time when you think about. It. That's a lot of time to invest in a relationship. And I hope that this video is coming in clear because it seems like it could be a lag. I'm not going to restart it, so hey, it is what it is. But it seems like a relatively long time to be with someone 20 years y'all 20 years that's like a that's a whole generation of time to give to someone right to spend with someone and then unfortunately clearly it didn't work out um they got divorced right um so he's like oh let's see what's on the other side i get it right you just get tired of a particular gender of people or sex of people and just like ah I'm done <laughs> I'm done and interesting enough when you look at the MGTOW movement which I got a chance to kind of explore a little bit right when I I had got a comment that was left and this was like I made this years ago when I was living in California where I got a comment left on one of my videos and it was like hashtag MGTOW, right? Which stands for men going their own way. 
And I was curious to see, like, what is this? What is MGTOW? So I ended up um, Google. I Googled it, right? But it, 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 I still was curious, and so I made a video to, to get you guys' input on what the fuck was MGTOW. Now, I actually entitled the video, What the Fuck is MGTOW, right? And so as I began to talk about this MGTOW, which I call a movement, I noticed that um, it attracted a lot of different types of men who essentially were bitter. Bitter, disgruntled, just done, shall we say, with the female species, right? And then their argument was that, oh, like, society is not set up in favor of men, right? It's really against men, especially as it comes to, like, when it comes to divorce and, like, um, child support and they you know just are not satisfied with it they feel like you know it doesn't work in their favor essentially the system and so their way of kind of revolting against it is to be just done with women to do away with women like kind of all together and to imagine a society that <laughs> is free of women right interesting because there is a parallel i must say between the MGTOW movement and what you see with Pan-Africanism, when you think about it, um, or pro-black, right? Those two movements, pro the pro-black, um, or some people kind of refer to it as like black nationalism, and the Pan-African movement, which is more global, like there is a push to kind of create a, this kind of utopian society for black people where we live like independently of white people, right? Independently mean like we have our own everything, you know, our own system, our own infrastructure, our own government. Um, we run the show and it's almost as if like white people wouldn't necessarily be a factor. Be a, they would be a non-factor in that system. It wouldn't really be relevant or really exist, Right. So when you think about McTow and this, they call it a philosophy, but it's more a movement. And I, and I, and I had to say this because like it was kind of like some back and forth between myself and the, these guys who are proponents of the McTow movement. They're like, oh, it's not a movement, you know, it's a philosophy, right? And I'm like... <laughs> like who you think you're fooling right um i feel like their uh attempt to say okay it's a just philosophy is a way to kind of soften soften any type of um opposition to this movement right to to kind of lessen the, the the perceived threat to to make it seem like oh it's not you know it's not that serious though that obviously there is a lot in the works um within this group and this group is a growing number of men, you know. And I'm not here to try to negate, like, their experiences. Because their experiences is, is their own, right? Like, everyone ha is entitled to express themselves and and to, you know, be validated, I think, for whatever their experience is in life, right? Um, I don't know what it's like to be a man because I'm not a man. And I don't have any desire to be a man. Um, but, you know, I can only imagine that, yeah, you know, a lot of men have suffered, um, due to, due to movements like, you know, the women's rights movement and Me Too, and those are things that they mention to kind of, um, to justify, you know, their philosophy or, you know, their ways of thinking, right? Which I say is a movement because it's bigger than just a philosophy, right? This is actually things that they are uh, acting upon, right? And, and, and there are activists that are part of this, I think, who are trying to make changes. Like, make changes within, you know, within our society, make changes within government, make changes that are going to be substantial not just like saying okay we have this belief system and we have this way of thinking you know but even beyond that to actually go about lobbying you know for change you know so you know and it's really it's really complex is you know that's like 
what MGTOW kind of is in a nutshell, but it's really, really like deeper than that because, you know, with the idea of having a female less society, um, <laughs> imagine that, right? Like, you know, there's that, cause I, I think in my video I said, you know, how is that even possible, right? Like in order for life to exist, we're talking about procreation, um, which is, you know, biologically based. We, I mean, you can't argue with science or debate with science, but it takes a male and a female, right, to create life, right? And they're like, oh, you no, know, you have artificial wombs and all that. So they're like really serious about this, right? Um, so as I like was reading this email, it, it kind of got the, gave me the flavor of McTowell. Um, I got that kind of sense. In reading this this email so I was very McTowish right like when you think about his sentiment of being married for 20 years like you said from 26 which is relatively young I think to get married and a lot of men like think about those years right think about the years between 26 and 46 that's prime right that's prime to, to devote your life to a person a relationship with uh, the thought in mind, right? Assuming, okay, this is the one. This is who I'm going to spend, like, my life with, right? And then it not to work. And we didn't get, like, the end of the email, which I'm going to get to. I'm not going to say it right now. But he says, like, it, he kind of talks about, like, the source of his, his, his anger, right? And his sentiment towards the female species. So it makes sense. It kind of sets the, the context for why he chose to explore an alternative lifestyle, alternative sexual lifestyle, um, apart from the norm, right? Of being heterosexual and being a man and interact, you know, like having these relationships with a woman, right? A, a, a natural born woman, shall we say. Um, so let's keep reading. However, being divorced, I decided to explore. I mean, you can't blame them, right? You're just like, all right, fuck that. That shit didn't work, right? And, then, and you grow a kind of bitterness, almost to the point of aversion towards something that left you so tainted, you know, so bruised. As a man, why would you think to start over a fresh with a different woman, right? Natural born woman, shall we say. So he says, my first sexual encounter, which is following that divorce, was with a very nice, shorter black man, as I am six foot two. He was dark, 10 inch, thick <laughs> penis. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, right? <laughs> to emphasize, um, 10 inch thick penis. <laughs> he taught me so much. You should have gave examples here, okay? This is where you should have gave examples. Because you don't want to leave a person to assume but because he did not give examples, we can only assume that what he taught you was sexually related, right? You're saying that, and this is all one sentence, right? He says, he taught me so much, comma, and it was too painful because of his thickness to receive anal successfully. So what he taught you was really just sexually based. Otherwise, why not talk about that, right? Like, you put all of that in one sentence. As if what he taught you had nothing to do with anything that was profound, necessarily. It was just like, oh, he taught you through this sexual experience. Um, also, he says, I believe I was 48 years old. And it was my first bisexual experience. I learned two very important lessons. Number one, I like long, slender, dark dick. So that's what you learn, right? That's what he taught you. 
I don't think that he taught you that. He just simply was um, like the catalyst for you being able to decide to, to, to come to terms with what's a suitable size for you. Which is like you said, slender, dark dick or long, slender, dark dick because he was more well endowed. Like you say, he had a 10 inch thick penis. So you learn that's not for you. But did he necessarily teach you that? I don't think he taught you that necessarily. How would he teach you that? So even just the way he like framed that, it sounded as though like in that relationship, this guy writing this email was more of the bottom uh, in that relationship. Um, just the way he framed, you know, his words, like saying, oh, he taught me. And it, you were a virgin to the, he calls it a bisexual experience, but I would like to say it's more of a homosexual experience. All right, moving along, he says, okay. Also, I believe I was 40 years old and it was my first bisexual experience. I learned, I learned two very important lessons. Number one, I like long, uh, slender, dark dick. Second, yes, I wasn't really attracted to men. But I was very attracted to LSDD, long, slender, dark dick. That's a whole well, catchphrase, I guess, within the porn industry. Um, now, this is the part that I never hear much about. My next encounter. So that was his very first encounter post his divorce. <laughs> um, interesting. Like, how many white men can relate? <laughs> You know, you're with a woman, that shit don't work. And then you're like, oh, let me go I, to a black man. <laughs> I think this is something that he's always been thinking about. It's not like all of a sudden, like, oh, okay, well, shit didn't work out. And she just left me so fucking uh, angry, right? Because of how the separation, the divorce went. So let me just go do, let me just find the... The complete opposite of what I was with, which would be a black man. Nah, nah, bro, you had already been thinking. Those thoughts have already been festering, I think, in your mind um, for a long time, even while you were married, right? And then, okay, you're divorced. That's what you wanted to do all along. Challenge me. Say I'm lying. That's what you wanted to do all along. All right. He said, now this is a part that I never hear much about. You never hear much about? All right. I think he's saying in terms of like being talked about, especially like on YouTube or in YouTube videos. Um, he says, my next encounter was with a dark black trans pre-op with a gorgeous that's what I'm saying. I feel like these some of these details, like it's bullshit, right? I just feel like the whole story is really it's like you're making up shit. This is you're lying, right? Because eleven inches. I mean, this is fantasy. That's what I feel like. This story is fantasy. I'm willing to entertain entertain it because it's entertainment, you know, and it's you know, it's it's content, right? But I don't buy it. I don't really I don't believe it. This is 11 inches. I don't even believe 10 inches, but 11 inches. This is his fantasy. Um, gorgeous 11 inch, long, slender, dark dick. I fell in love with her, right? So he's saying her because this is a transgender um, woman. So basically, was born a man. And is now transgendering and becoming more of a transsexual because I guess they're planning to get the operation, but this is pre-op right before the operation um, to go, become a full, a full female, right? So he says, I fell in love with her and we were together until she moved away to Florida. Oh, Florida, given that I'm from Florida, it's bullshit, right? Like the fact that he's saying that he was living in New York, then he moved to... 
California, like, sounds very much like my story. And then saying that, oh, this um, second encounter that he had was with a, a dark black trans pre-op woman or man turning woman, basically. But that ended because she moved to Florida. Like, who really, who really buys this? I don't. Anyway, let's just keep going. He says, after that, I had a sexual relations with two other black trans pre-op, and I realized that to be truly bisexual, I needed these special girls. Or as I like to say, a chick with a dick. I love everything about a female, especially nice breasts, and that's why currently I want a relationship with a versatile, dark, black trans with a long, slender, dark dick. And I will be versatile and do top and bottom. I am not attracted to any other dick. Interesting, right? Like, I just find the dynamics to be, like, like, you know, and of course, he's not the only one. There are other people who are attracted to transsexuals, and they consider themselves not not to be gay, right? So, for example, like in this case, like a, a man being attracted to a trans woman. Now, you think about it, like if they go through the whole hormone therapy and, and the operations, like they're a woman, right? And that's how they identify, you know, their gender is a woman, um, though they were born, you know, male. Um, and I think that's where it, it kind of confused some people because it's just like, if you are attracted to the, like the physicality of a woman, right? Being a trans woman, why not just get a real woman, right? What is it about, what is it about that per like that type of person that you you prefer to to be involved with a trans woman as opposed to just a person that was naturally born a woman <laughs> what's so fascinating about the trans part and you're watching this you know if you're the the writer of this email feel free to answer this question now if you can relate to this this story and, and you are a man and you're attracted to trans women like help us understand why not just go for the woman but i think it makes sense when you consider the context though right like he's already went that route like he said he was married from 26 to 46 the prime years of his life not to say okay when you're in your mid 40s approaching 50 like your life is over no like life you can look at it like it's just beginning, right? But a lot of your youth, you know, is behind you when you think about it. Um, so it's just like that part, it's almost like a loss when you think about it, you know. Um, they probably had great times during that period, that 20-year period that they were married. But a lot of it is just, it's, it's gone, it's behind him. And he's trying to find some kind of meaning and excitement and value in his life going forward and he's 59 years old right so think about it it can be kind of exciting going against the grain or the norm um being a, a man right um uh, cisgender man and you're engaging in these you know sexual encounters with trans women that's like kind of exciting, right? It's out of the norm. It's not your typical vanilla type of relationship deal. So I get it. But let me know if I missed something. Like he says, I love everything about a female, especially nice breasts. And that's why currently I want a relationship with a versatile dark black trans with a LSDD, long slender dark dick. And I will be versatile and do top and bottom. Um, so I guess that's pretty much the answer, right? Like, it's, it's, it, it allows him to experience his versatility of the dynamic in that relationship. Being able to be the top, right? Being, you know, the, the man in that kind of encounter, the sexual encounter. 
um, basically fucking the the woman in her essence when she is that woman, right? Or being switching over and you know being the bottom, getting fucked because this person still has a, a penis because it's pre-op. They haven't done the chop yet, you know, yet they still have breasts, right? Interesting. And like he said earlier, the first sexual encounter after his divorce from his ex-wife was with a man who was well endowed with a BBC. Um, that didn't work out. So he found out what he really truly desires, which is slender, dark dick. Long, shall we emphasize, slender, dark dick. <laughs> Uh, like he says, I am not attracted to any other dick, nor do I want to be with any man. He doesn't want to be with a man. Just trans women, right? Men who are, you know, transitioned. People who were born a, a, a male, but, you know, more so, they're, they're more feminine than anything, right? But they still have a penis just in case he wants to be stimulated. That's interesting. Also... I would definitely be a bottom for the right black man to have sex, but I do not want or desire BBC. Made that clear. As long as I watch the interracial trans porn, I am very happy. But I do not like how other interracial porn tries to convince white men that they are faggots. So it's like he's still holding on to his masculinity. Because you do have some gay men that... <laughs> like they they proudly accept and embrace being called a faggot, right? That that identity of a faggot, you know. In fact, like I've read an email from one who like that's how he identifies, you know, and he doesn't take offense to that. So clearly, there's a, a spectrum of gender expression and, and preference in terms of uh, gender identity that is at play, you know, um, amongst men, right? Of any race, you know, not just white men. So he, this, this writer here, it sounds like, like he's still holding on to his, his masculinity. And that's why I think he makes it clear, like, oh no, I'm not into men. Like I, I like women, like the, the, the female energy, the essence of a woman, right? That feminine energy, which trans women have. But at the same time, he wants to be stimulated. And it reminds me of a video that I did. I was back in LA where I asked the question because it kind of came, um, the topic came up from, I think, someone who emailed me or left a comment. And, and I went ahead and went public and made a video on this topic as to whether or not. Um, heterosexual men, let's say if they prefer stimulation, ain't no stimulation by the fe their female partner, is that considered to be gay, right? Does that make them gay, right? If you are a heterosexual man, right, and you're with a woman, but you like to be penetrated annually where you want her to put on a strap on and fuck you in the ass, does that make them gay? And, you know, a lot of people said no. Um, I did read the comments to that video, after I made it, but a lot of people who commented on that video were like, no, it really doesn't, you know, um, cause he's still with a woman. Um, then some are like, hell yeah, because that's how it starts out. Right. <laughs> you know, you start out wanting to be penetrated with a toy, you know, by your female partner. And all of a sudden you realize, okay, there's more, there's more that you're not getting. It's more to the story. And you want to get the full story, you want to get the full details, right? And be able to ex experience what it really feels like being penetrated by a real warm penis, right? Because you're talking about toys, <laughs> which don't have veins, don't have blood or anything circulating, just rubber or what is it, silicone, um really doesn't compare to like the real thing especially if the real thing is healthy you know and, and and strong so 
That's a perspective. As long as I watch interracial trans porn, I'm very happy, but I do not like how other interracial porn tries to convince white men that they are faggots. I want to be bisexual, or I've been bisexual for 13 years, because uh, he's 59, so that would be 46, which like he said, that's the that was the ending point of his marriage um, at 46 years old, and he says... I have no desire to be homosexual. And I always enjoy your sex. Not my sex. <laughs> but I think that's a typo. I always enjoy sex with any woman I was with. <sighs> okay. You always enjoy sex with any woman you were with. But then he goes on to say, I lose a vagina, but I gain a beautiful dark dick. I, I'm I'm confused here. I'm confused. But he says he admits early on, right, in this email that he's never did any cuckolding. But it makes you, like, for him to even mention that, hmm, it makes you wonder. And I already said the real reason why white men become cuckolds, right? And some of y'all easily got triggered and you took offense to it. Um, because I, I, I nailed that shit. And I basically said that cuckolding, right, is a backdoor approach to homosexuality. Getting fucked by BBC, you know. If that's what you want, just, you know, why, you, like, use a female, right? It's like, as a middle man to get access to that. Um, that's like, like a roundabout approach, right? Going all the way around the block just to get fucked by a man you know you persuade her like oh yeah i want to see you happy i want to make sure you're thoroughly satisfied so you get to be fucked by any man of your choice under one condition that i also get to play <laughs> yeah Someone's like, oh, no, that's not true. That's not the real. You make it seem like that is the only reason. I say it's the only reason. I say that the real reason why white men become cuckolds. I say it was the only reason. Real. Real meaning hidden in that context. But anyway, let's keep going. <sighs> I believe this is the only way to be bisexual. And even here in California, I've had a relationship with two beautiful black ladies, which totally makes me believe that I prefer women. You've had a relationship with two beautiful black ladies, me trans women. There is a difference. Y'all got I know that y'all really be deep into this um gender expression and fluidity right and alternative sexual express gender and sexual expressions right and i'm open-minded clearly but tell that to a, a straight alpha <laughs> heterosexual man right now nah, you can't try to say it's the same thing it's not the same thing and you there's this debate as to whether or not you know, a trans woman, you know, should admit to a, a heterosexual man. Like, you know this man is heterosexual, right? And you're keeping it a secret that you were born a man. Like, that's offensive. Like, that's... No, you don't... That's an insult. That's an attack. You don't do shit like that, right? It's just like you're hiding. And they feel like, well, I don't have to, like... That's my personal business. I don't have to say, okay. But it is wrong. It's wrong on so many levels. Feel free to share your comments below, but it is. And that's still a part of who you are. <laughs> Though you may say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm different. I've transformed. <laughs> yeah, you, you have, but still. 
still, you know, people want the real deal. Typically, a heterosexual man want you. They want to be with women. That's what makes them hetero. <laughs> they want a, a woman born female, right? Not trans. So you should be respectful of that. And be open about it. Because I get it. Like, you know. It limits, I think, your options. Right? Clearly. It limits your options. So. Uh, there are only but so many men. Who would be open to being with a trans woman. Though I think, actually, there's probably more than what most people uh, would like to admit, though. Because there are a lot of people, right? Like, there are a lot of men. They ain't gonna sit up here and broadcast that shit, like, on social like, media. Like, oh, yeah, I'm dating a trans woman, right? But they be doing that shit, though. And they don't care if it was born a man or a woman. If it's attractive to them physically, right? She got nice breasts ass you know she's shaped good and a lot of them do be very attractive like sydney star i like her personality like she's cool as shit and she's very beautiful i just she's just put together well put together um and a lot of men probably don't even know that she was born a man right and she probably don't feel obligated to, to say so you know but i think you know just rule of thumb i think honesty is the best policy um and it happens the other way around, too, where you have, like, women, trans men, you know, you're born a, a female and, and, you know, become uh, transgender, become a man, and they don't say anything. And, you know, a woman is heterosexual. She thinks she got a man the whole time. She got, you know, like, think about how that plays out, especially when it comes to procreation going to run into some issues, right? With the lack of honesty and transparency. All right. Let's keep going. We're almost at the end of this email here. Okay, he says that... I've had a relationship with two beautiful black ladies, which totally makes me believe that I prefer women. I just like a fully functional penis so I can feel, yeah, I can feel what it's like to be on both ends. And there's no better understanding than topping like in a heterosexual relationship and bottoming like in a gay relationship. Yeah. Um, have the, the best of both worlds, essentially, right? Truly the... <laughs> He just took the words out of my mouth before I even read it. <laughs> he says, truly the best of both worlds. Please do a video about this because I'm sure there's more white men like me, of course. Incidentally, uh, my wife of 20 years, I divorced. Now, here's the kicker I was talking about. We're at the end of the email. He says, um, incidentally. My wife of 20 years that I divorced was white. So it sounds like he initiated a divorce. Or he's just taking ownership for his role in the divorce, shall we say. Um, and she was terrible. Now this, it's funny how he leave off with this, right? This is like his last kind of line in the email. He's like, my wife of 20 years that I divorced was white and she was terrible i divorced her after she bankrupted me for fifty thousand dollars which i had to pay off in a chapter 12 yo see that's something that came up that's why i say like this email kind of gives a flavor of mctow because you come across a lot of mctow men um who talk about exact same thing just being stripped right like they like broken down you, you know you kind of tear down a man's ego and, and a sense of identity as a woman right um you know i'm not i'm not saying that you know like men don't go through things and issues with women because i can see it from both perspectives so it's fucked up 
But then he closes and says, <laughs> that's a nice dick on this girl. And he embeds a photo which I did not want to see. I have, I don't know why, like, men think that people like to see. I don't want to see. I can care less. I don't want to see no fucking dick. But he includes a dick pic. Not his dick, but just like an example of a long, slender, dark dick. I really don't care about that. And then he sends another email and says, forgot to send my picture. Um, and he inserts his picture. And he's well-dressed in a suit and tie. White man, I mean, clean shaven, you know, looks like he's well kept. Um, he's having fun. Do you, bruh? And then he sends another email and says, Go to Google, search BBC, hypno porn. So I did, because I'm like, okay, okay. Now, I when I typed in BBC Hypno Porn, all I saw was just, like, porn, clearly. <laughs> um, which, I, I mean, I'm not fascinated by porn. Porn really does, like, zilch for me. But I do like a certain type, like, of videos, like, the bond, like bondage videos. I wouldn't really call that porn, though. It's, di it's a different classification, I think. Um, but, yeah, what I saw was just, like, interracial uh, porn with white women sucking black fucking cock. Okay. Whoop de doo. <laughs> and then he says, also search BBC brainwashing. Watch a couple of those videos and you'll see why they're 100% constructed to hypnotize, mesmerize, and brainwash the white man. See, now he's like playing, I, I, I want to say victim. But as if, like, he's not taking responsibility for his own proclivity, right? For his own desire and attraction towards black men. Or, or not really men, but really what's between their legs, right? It's hypersexual. Lies kind of attraction to the body part. Not really the man. I don't think he really gives a fuck about black men. So this is where my pro-black aspect comes in and y'all know that i'm a pan-african it's just like listen you do you i'm all about sexual freedom and sexual expression but i also have to kind of put my um pro-black hat on to say this and i've said this before when people wanted to get my perspective on bnwo black new world order i'm just like really it's <laughs> it's just a cash phrase it's a, it's a porn cash phrase and people are really buying into this idea, assuming that the way for black people to kind of leverage a sense of uh, political, economic, and social power is by having interracial relationships. Really, the relationship is predicated upon sex. That's the relationship. It ain't really no fucking relationship, right? And then you have people to the kind of argument want to say, oh, well, no, it's not just about sex. Like, you know... The black person can get the white person's vote, right? I don't know, cause y'all, this is what y'all come to me with. Y'all come to with to me talking about sex. These these people here want to sit up here and shout, "Oh, Black New World Order is a, a game changer!" Like, who the fuck y'all think y'all talking to? An airhead? No. You know, if you like fucking black penis, just just stick with that. You like black penis, right? That's the extent of your attraction to probably anything black, right? Any person that's black, right, is what's between their legs. And, uh, and that's the form of, in my opinion, of objectification. You know, and some people like to be you. They like to be objectified. Okay, that's them, right? Um... But not really my thing, you know, and I, I like to look at it from more of a political stance um, in terms of how is this really benefiting the state of black Americans, right? How is this advancing the black community? Like, what is this doing for, 
like, you know, the, the black community at large, right? They try to make the argument that it's helping. But no, you're it's helping you. You're getting sexually gratified. You're getting your sexual needs met as a white person. Okay, kudos to you for that. That's you, though. That's a more personal benefit. Right? So I think it's very um, selfish. And I think also careless and very insensitive to try to play upon, I think, the the like the atrocities of black people uh, to play upon the disadvantages that black people, you know, have succumbed to, right? The marginalization of black people with this whole catchphrase of black new world order, right? And you know, you know, that's not that's not a means to necessarily combat white supremacy. It's silly. You know, it's a joke. And a lot of white people, you know, sensible white men will admit that, you know, it's bullshit. It's bogus. Um, so, yeah, going back to the way he worded this, it's just like, oh, saying that BBC hypno porn, the way it's made, you know, it's like designed to hypnotize, mesmerize and brainwash the white man, like, why not just admit, like, that's what you like, <laughs> and that's the reason why you attracted to that, because it's something in you that is drawn to that type of content online, something, just admit, just something in you, what, you figure out what is it in you that is drawing you to that, instead of saying, oh, well, they make this type of content, and to, to brainwash, and they get me sucked in, I somehow, I stumbled across it, I got sucked into it, now I'm brainwashed and mesmerized, and I can't get over this addiction that I have to black penis, come on, so badly that he finds himself wanting to suck and take BBC annually. Many have jerk-off instructions with cum countdowns. The more the white man orgasms while looking at BBC, the more addicted he becomes. And he begins to crave BBC. Just speak for yourself, right? You know, you say you can't take it, whatever. Um, you reason why your ass can't take it because ain't not supposed to be going to your ass anyway. Your ass ain't made you know, for shit to be going in, you know, it's made for shit to come out, <laughs> but that's a whole other topic, I'm about to end this video, feel free to share your comments below, there's no judgment zone, listen, y'all gonna do y'all regardless, okay, so don't make it seem like, oh, like, I'm sitting up here pointing fingers and judging, because I'm gonna do what I do, <laughs> regardless, nobody can tell me how to live my life, because I'm gonna live my life how I choose to live my life, um, and I'm very alternative, you know, in my sexual proclivities, right, and, and the, the dynamic of my relationship with a, a man, what that looks like, is very different than the vanilla, the, the typical norm, um, and that's not going to change, I made that very clear to my psychologist when I went to therapy, it's not going to change, so you do you, um, I just want to be an advocate for people just walking the truth, you know, Live your truth. Don't have to, don't try to hide behind these, you know, made up labels, you know, and kind of tapering along the lines of, of politics, right? Like, I feel like that's a dangerous arena to try to go towards, um, which clearly I think a lot of y'all just like playing with fire. On that note, I'm in this video. Share your comments below. Love you guys. I actually enjoy this topic. Thank you for the idea. And come back and feel free to send a reply in an email. And we can do a part two. Catch y'all later.